So ever since text to video dropped, I think one of the questions that we've all been wondering is how long will it be before I can take a screenplay, drop it into an AI video model and have it spit out a final feature film? The answer of course is it'll be a while. Well, kind of at least, because today I've got a look at an open source project that looks to be the roadmap from AI script to screen. And conceptually, it's based in one of the greatest films of all time. All that plus a look at the future of video in painting. Okay, lots to cover, let's dive in. So one question that definitely gets asked a lot in the comments, and this goes all the way back to like when Gen 2 was still on Discord, which I didn't even realize you could still access. You can't generate there anymore, but for historical purposes, the final video that was generated was uh, Jeff Bezos in a Santa suit in an Amazon warehouse. So I thank you very much for that, JV Pope. Well, ever since those ancient days, a comment that definitely sort of reappears quite often is, you know, I have this screenplay that I wrote years ago. I, I was never made. When can I bring it into one of these AI video models and have it, you know, make a movie out of it? Now, while we have a lot of tools that could potentially accomplish something like that, we have LLMs that could take a text script and break it down. We have image generators to create storyboards, plus we have video, speech, and music generators to fill out you know, the rest of the production. But obviously bringing all of those together is a lot more difficult than pulling a you know, Jean-Luc Picard make it so. And that is where Open Clap comes in. This is an open source project from Julian Bilk, and we've covered Julian a couple of times on the channel in the past. He was the author of AI Comic Factory and AI Storyteller. And I should definitely point out that this is not a video, audio, and image generator. Rather, this is a interchangeable format to contain AI-generated assets. So this isn't taking your final draft file and you know creating an AI-generated feature film out of it. Instead, OpenClap takes a different approach, but one that is still rooted in the history of cinema, namely one of the greatest movies of all time, The Godfather. The first one, I mean, of the two. There are only two. So what Julian did for OpenClap is take inspiration from the prompt book and not prompts like as you and I think about them, but rather a prompt book from a stage production or you know, essentially a production Bible. Interestingly, Francis Ford Coppola used this prompt book method while shooting The Godfather. It was a giant three ring binder that was filled with uh, you know, scene by scene breakdowns, an annotated copy of the original Godfather novel, uh, notes on times and settings and cliches to avoid along with casting ideas. So extrapolating that idea to AI cinema, essentially what OpenClap is, is it's the folder. So again, what we're looking at here are these various blocks, which are called claps. Each clap can store information such as inputs and outputs or binary data such as prompts, images, sound, music, and videos. And where this gets interesting is Julian has built a screenplay to clap converter. So this is a way of taking a final screenplay and breaking it down into essentially a prompt book for an AI generator to understand. So as we can see here, Open Clip has broken down a screenplay. We have various tracks here where it has popped information in from what is extrapolated from that script. We have things like what the style is, where the location is, and then in these miscellaneous tracks, you can even see things like there's dialogue down here and uh, even uh, score cues. Now, as a note, the Open Clip data structure can be used in a very light way. So you could do things like just give it a broad storyline, art direction, or prompts and you know the rest would be filled in or interpreted by the ai with a note that apparently open clip files can include interactive layers so that is an interesting idea that probably opens up a whole new realm of storytelling but i think what's most interesting fascinating and potentially powerful about open clap is essentially the types of information that you can shove into any one clap uh, you can put a prompt in there you can put image and video storyboards in there you can add things like timing for events, 4D Gaussian splats, consistent characters, prompts for NPC agents, or in the case of interactive content, you can even put in scripted world events. Interestingly, in the documentation, it's mentioned that the readiness for interactivity by means of time index perimeters make it the ideal format to build AI apps by prompting multi-purpose world models such as Pandora. Now, Pandora is a new video model that we took a look at a few videos back. If you missed that video, you'll definitely wanna check it out. It is linked down below. 
In the meantime, if you want to play around with all of the code for OpenClap or even extend it to make it your own thing, it is also available. That link is down below. Moving on, we have a very cool AI animation tool called Tune Crafter. This works by interpolating two cartoon images by leveraging the pre-trained image to video diffusion priors. Essentially, you give it a starting image, you give it an ending image, and it makes up the motion between. And the results are really promising. Here we have two examples. I'm not sure where the sources on these are. Uh, this top one definitely has a very like Ghibli-esque look to it. Uh, and then the bottom one kind of looks like a CG rendered, I don't know, kind of like maybe it's like Devil May Cry. Anyhow, by giving it an input starting frame and an input ending frame, uh, Toon Crafter then figures out what is happening between. So we can kind of see it at work here in this input sketch guidance. Don't stare at that too long, otherwise it's gonna give you a seizure. Um, and then ultimately in the generated output video. As its name implies, Toon Crafter obviously does its you know best work when dealing with animated sources. Uh, this example is really good. It definitely has that feeling of being, you know, traditional cell-based animation, considering that you're kind of getting that skip in the character as he's running away. Uh, you know, traditional animation frame rates were usually more in the 8 to 12 FPS range, so you would kind of get some skippage. I mean, this looks like, you know, old school, like, like late 80s animation to me. Toon Crafter can be implemented into Comfy UI, but if you need a simpler approach, Fofer has set up a replicate space where you can try it out. It's very easy to use, um, you know, issue a prompt here, a negative prompt if you want one. And then as you scroll down, you'll have uh, up to, I think it's 10 images here. Yeah, up to 10 images that you can then add in that will be keyframes for your animation. Um, at the end, you'll have the option to loop it, uh, interpolate it, or do color correction on it. I was curious to see how it would do with sort of traditional flipbook animation. So I ended up taking this, you know, Pluto-esque character uh, and extrapolating six frames and adding them into Toon Crafter. The results were surprisingly pretty good. Perfect? No, but I mean, still pretty decent. That said, it is still AI video and you're still gonna get some weirdness. Uh, this was another run that I did uh, where obviously the background is a lot busier and at some point this, this cat just kind of Tarzans in a total hallucination. But that was just a quick experiment that I ran and actually coming to think about it, I did use very low resolution images and it's possible that I actually gave it too much information in terms of the movement. Now, Mick Murphy did a pretty interesting experiment here, um, taking stills of photos of himself, to ended up creating this. Now this isn't completely flawless, like the character does freak out on a couple of frames here and there, but for the most part, I'm super impressed with how it manages to stay stylistically consistent. And I do think that there are probably some workflow solutions that will solve any of the issues that are taking place here. So you can play around with Toon Crafter. The link is down below and you're definitely going to be seeing a lot more of it. It might not be called Toon Crafter, but it will be Toon Crafter. Rounding out, video inpainting is about to get a lot more powerful with ReVideo or Remake a Video with Motion and Content Control. Uh, they were kind enough to underline the Re in the video to let you know how they came up with the name ReVideo. To me, this is a totally missed opportunity to have called this ReVid MoCoCo. Why can't I get the job where I get to name these things? So ReVideo solves the problem where when you do a video inpaint, it doesn't really pay attention to the motion of the thing. This one is point and drag based. Uh, some of the authors include people that did work on Drag Nua, uh, Drag Anything, and Pika. So in this very short clip of Bill Gates talking to a robot, uh, utilizing this method, we can turn it into Bill Gates talking to a robot. Uh, as you can see here with these various dots, these are clearly the tracking points and you know, they change colors based off of essentially a heat map. Here's another example featuring my boy Godzilla. Uh, by the way, Godzilla minus one, the Japanese Godzilla feature released last year is on Netflix now. Super high recommend Chef's Kiss. That movie is awesome. Anyhow, we can now very easily inpaint a fedora on top of him that will stay on top of his head and turn him into like Godzilla Jones. Please, Legendary, do not get any ideas. Just leave Godzilla alone. But what's kind of great about this is that you're not just limited to sort of linear movements. You can actually create motion paths as we see in this example, which we will change into this head bop. Now there are some like weird issues that end up happening in the eyeball there, but that is also a ton of movement for AI video. 
a place that I think is gonna really end up shining is in something like a visual effect like this. Code for ReVideo will be coming out later this month. I have a link to the page down below. Quick admin note before we wrap for the day, the channel is very close to hitting the mythical 100,000 subscriber mark. So if you haven't had the opportunity to, I do invite you to hit the subscribe button. I mean, I know it's silly, it's just a number and nothing actually changes when you cross over, but I don't know, still, I, I, it'd be nice. So thank you in advance, and I do, as always, thank you for watching. My name is Tim.